So if I have to pee a lot, I'm sorry. Am I learning Spanish? I'm trying. It's harder than it seems. <laughs> For real. But I'm tr I'm trying. Beep boo mommy boo beep boo beep boo beep mommy boo. What's wrong with you? I've just had a lot of fatigue and headaches recently. Very weird. Suspicious. Like, I was expecting to get sick or something, but I've just been feeling this way way too long, so it has to be something that I've been doing a long time, too. Un... Un... Is it un... Un momento? Wait, do people ever have, like, really, really low-key COVID? Like, no coughing, no sneezing, no nothing. Just super, super low-key COVID. Un. Un momento. Should I take a test? Dude, she's so cute! Okay, sorry, sorry. <laughs> Mimi just got freaked out by me being so loud. Alright, let's adjust real quick. Bloop. So, for starters, thank you so much, Genshin Impact, for sponsoring this part of my stream, and thank you guys for joining us. There's a lot of stuff to try out, because it's a new version, Update 3.2. Um, there's this beautiful character named Nahida. Her autos look like this little square thing. Everything in this game is painfully beautiful. It's an open-world uh, RPG game with so many characters like this is just the four that you can swap through at any time and all the characters kind of like have a different element that they are good at but there are so many characters yeah i guess so what they say is true i guess so you have to see the world for yourself to appreciate how anyways if you'd like to check it out um I have a banner down below. But usually what I like to do because this game is so like fun and easy and chill and just makes your heart happy that I just I like to talk during it. <laughs> so if you guys want to do something, let me know. Like, if you want to talk about something, I'm here, you know? Very gotcha. Oh, yeah. I've spent a not cute amount of money on this game. But it's also brought me a lot of joy. I started playing it, I guess, technically during the pandemic. And it was an absolute amazing game for that. My crush texted me, help, please. Well, how about you answer? I filmed this Q&A video. I'm going to give you guys the smallest, okay, smallest preview. Because I don't want to give the answers to any anything else, but this one's at least funny. <laughs> Genshin saved my marriage and cured my broken limbs. Facts. Um, okay, so... <clears throat> one sec, let me set... A task or goal or something. And then I will tell you guys the Q&A thing. So I had people ask questions on Instagram, maybe Twitter, like a bunch of random spots. And on my, on one of my Twitters, I was like, hey, or on my Instagram, I was like, hey, if you want your question to be sent in anonymously, please write in anonymous so I don't include your name. Whoa. Ouchie. Um, and someone was like, they said, they said, how do I know if I have a crush on someone? And I kid you not, my answer was, when you ask questions like this anonymously, 
Like, that's it. It's that simple. Deadass are like, um, anonymous. How do I know if I have a crush on someone? I wonder. I, I wonder. If you're sitting at home thinking about it like that, you probably do. And then I gave like an actual answer, but that kind of is the actual answer. No, I want to do her E. By the way, when you play this game, the whole idea is to swap between characters. And then when you combo their abilities, it does extra damage. But sometimes I'm just lazy and I just keep the same one for the whole fight. <laughs> but yeah, not cute. I hope they don't feel personally attacked when they hear that answer. But it's true. I guess I can go here. Um, how did you manage work in school? Uh, I basically didn't do anything else. <laughs> like, I think we gotta start accepting that there's only so many hours in a day. You cannot do everything. Like, sp physically speaking, it's just impossible. Where am I going? But yeah, in college, university, when I was doing engineering and streaming at the same time. Oh my god, look. I kind of missed, but I kind of didn't. Um, yeah, when I did both of those things, I had no time for anything else. What is this thing? I think I might swap to... Oh, I want to use Keking. Which engineering? I did chemical, but... My first year, I had to try everything a little bit. Hmm. I love Keking! Also, um, I always assume, you know, like the people watching on Twitch. Most of you guys watch Twitch daily, right? Well, I guess you can let me know instead of me assuming. Also, what is this? What is that yellow thing? Okay, let me know yes if you watch Twitch daily and no if you don't. Not anymore. Juke. Okay, so I guess it's it's kind of split. Get him! She did kind of nothing. Hey. Okay, so oh, I should hold her E. Oh. Oh. oh! Wait, what did it do? Oh. I'll try to find a monster. Do that. So, what was I gonna say? Oh, yes! For those that do watch regularly, how are you guys feeling about Overwatch? Because when I first played prior to going to New York, I was like, ooh, this is fun! But then. I went to New York for like a week and a half, so I couldn't tell if it kind of lost its hype or not. Oh. I can't watch it, why? It's hype, it's so good. Overwatch ranked is confusing, I'm not gonna lie. I don't get it. I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> Hey! There you go. Another target I really have to... Speaking of Overwatch, they announced new hero. Really? The rank system... The rank system is weird. It's very weird. I can't wait to get ranked. And then maybe I'll be bronze, but that's kind of exciting. It's like... When have I ever been bronze at something? <laughs> I mean, you know, it's like, ooh, I can climb. But then I swear I'm gonna climb to gold and be like, that's good enough. 
Yep. I'm done now. <laughs> I'll be right back. I'm gonna pee one sec. I don't know why I had to put emphasis on the P, but yeah. Hey, there's something strange over there. Come on, let's take a look. upset if she catches us lazing around like this. I know Overwatch is fun to play, but it's not I feel fun. Like really? I kind of like. I I surprisingly enjoy watching Overwatch. Hmm. Obviously, to each their own. I was just curious how you guys felt about it and why. And my big child is on my keyboard. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I just want to get something off my chest, okay? Wait. Do you hear her? <laughs> Weird looking dog, yeah. She's a half half, so you know. Why are you sitting like an owl, little weirdo? She sat on my armrest. <laughs> okay. She's so weird. Like, Mimi <laughs> is like the kind of animal that would be in a video game that's there to give you a very ominous quest, you know? Like, she's not, she's not just there for chills or companionship. She's like, I have a task for you. You must fulfill your destiny. <laughs> okay, I was gonna say, um, let me find a next quest. I know, so many things going on in my mind. Okay, so the thing I want to get off my chest, and I need you guys to. Pardon me for my ambiguity at the moment. But it's just yesterday, something so, so insane and fucked up happened to me. And I was really, I was ang I was quite angry, all right? And baffled and just so many feelings. I had a lot of feelings. And so I was telling my friend about it. And I realized... I realized, wait, maybe this is something that I should share. 
Because it is so fucked up and weird that I don't want it to happen to anyone else. Um... So I'm trying to figure out... Sorry. I'm trying to figure out... How exactly to share it, what to say... You know... All that. Talk slower. <laughs> I'm assuming that's sarcastic. I actually can't tell. But yeah. <laughs> it was Saikuno, wasn't it? How'd you know? It's just like... It made me realize how there are constantly people out there essentially trying to ruin my life or get the best of me or manipulate me in somehow somehow and that no matter really how much distance I make like I I always need to be worried which is what the hell? Which is just... It's... It's yucky to think about. But the reason I want to share it is mainly because like... Oops. Same element. Is I worry... If other people fall for stuff like that. Anyways. I'll tell you guys the full story. I was thinking of doing, like, uh, a YouTube video or a TikTok or something. Because, bitch, it's a fucking story. Like, when you guys hear it... Because I've told two people thus far, and they were both like, that's fucking insane. Especially when you see the material... I don't even know what to call it. I don't even know why I'm on this statue. Like, bitch, I cannot multitask for my life. Anyways. <laughs> Another fake story. <laughs> nah, bitch. I'm putting the evidence in the video. I'm just gonna... I'm, sh I'm showing it all because I really have no reason not to. It was so weird. Take yourself to home. That was beautiful. Oh, that was unnecessary. Drop a name. It's not relating to, um... Like, a, anyone you guys know. So, it's not that. I'm not baiting you guys. It's just like... I want to be able to present this fully and properly and in order to do that I need to make a video where I can like showcase everything or at least that's like the easiest way to do it I'm just telling you guys like this happened yesterday so I feel like I don't know is it just me like when shit happens I'm like I need to process it and then <laughs> like I'm still feeling some type of way about it um but that's not to say that like I need any particular amount of time I'm just trying to figure out the right way to put it all together I promise, I'm not baiting, and I promise I'll tell you guys, like, I have no reason not to. I just want to do it properly. Yeah. Ugh, it's just... It makes me so annoyed. Uh, like, like, angry at humanity. <laughs> I know that sounds so extra, but do you ever just... I feel like because I surround myself with, like, I think relatively nice, normal people... When I see someone do some really fucked shit, I'm like, people like you exist? That is crazy. Like, that is really, you're just walking around being a psycho. Sorry. <laughs> Except I'm not. What? what? Like, you guys need to be careful. There are psychos. 
walking around and they have no care in the world and they just want to get the best of you. And it's fucking weird, eh? All right, do your pretty thing. Oh my gosh, pretty thing. Okay, do the pretty thing. That was okay. <laughs> Nor. Ew. Oh yeah, I'll try to play with her a little bit more. You know what else is crazy? I bet when I talk about this... <laughs> This thing where, like, it's very clearly a situation where someone is being... F the F up. I know there are still gonna be people out there that are like, Oh, well, like, you should just know better. And whatever, why are you even sharing this? Why are you talking about your life? Ah, but this is not even... You know, just like the most random shit. Are you good, dude? Like, in the head. Really? Are you? I don't think you are. <laughs> Who hears something terrible happen to some- Like, dude, I just got robbed. And they're like, hmm, you really shouldn't carry around money. Actually, don't have a wallet. Actually, just be broke. <laughs> the fuck? Just say you're sorry that happened and move on. <laughs> I, I really- I don't understand people who make excuses. Oh my god, he was drowning. That's kind of sad. I don't get why people go so out of their way to make excuses. We're bad people? Just be broke, yeah. Just don't have money that people can steal. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna die. Um... But I think... My theory is that sometimes people are like that because... They don't want to... Empathize for whatever reason. Or because they feel like they're in a worse off position than you. They're like, I cannot give you any sympathy whatsoever because you're in a better position than me. You know what I mean? Is this an answer Anyways. Anyways. Everyone wants the best out of you. Some of them are just masked behind being nice and other are just straight up. Mm, I don't know if I agree. You know, like... There's a lot of, I guess, like, clout chasing or this or that. And I feel like that's all relatively normal. And yeah, people are kind of just looking out for themselves. Rarely? Well, not really. But it's not as often that I come across a situation where, wow, like, someone is just being insanely manipulative. Like, literally evil. Have you guys ever come across someone where you're like, whoa, you are evil deep down to your core. That's scary. Like, you're a villain in this world. <laughs> What's it like? What's it like? That's weird. Where's the quest thing? It's this, right? Do, 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 do. The other way, yo. Yeah. Ah, Luna, that's so cute. Who are you talking about? I'm gonna tell Paimon. I haven't seen her in so long. Hey, big head. Paimon can smell fisherman's toes. Mmm, the rope. A thick slice of soft mm. top with a generous serving of onion. Paimon's made up mm. her mind. It's an emergency. We must order a it's on you. Yeah, give me a sec, though. Haven't you heard? Look, doesn't that shop look interesting? Let's see what they're selling. Hey, Paimon trying to be an influencer. Chillax. Let's go and see what she wants. Was it IRL or online? I feel like evil is easier. No face to face. It was online, yeah. I do agree. People seem to have an easier time being like the most heinous versions of themselves online. But 
What I think people might not understand is whether you're doing it online or in person, your actions ultimately make who you are. Just because you're doing it behind a keyboard doesn't mean it's not poisoning your character. Welcome. Every tra <laughs> What did I tell you? Is there anything that catches your eye? It's all beautiful. I've been trying. Do you have any animo sigils with you? Probably. <laughs> More to the point. Any I think you use these along with other things to essentially evolve your characters, which is really cool. Let me swap animo up my all over Mondstadt. Absolutely. <laughs> it's actually obviously Let me swap the up my reason thingy. I need animo sigils. Is <laughs> uh, do come again. Please also visit my if party. <clears throat> All right, instead of maybe her, let's do Keking. Something's come up. And then maybe him. Mm -hmm. Well, who do you guys recommend? I'll let you guys pick. I'm down to swap her Amber and add someone else. I know you pronounce it Kishing. We just say Keking because there's a little emote when it's Kek. <laughs> bam, 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 bam. I see a lot of Raiden, but I don't I actually don't know who that is. Oh, but that's what too like Electro. Is that bad? I hope not. Who's the best fire character? <laughs> send one, send I actually haven't played her much, so I have no healer, but uh should I swap out Keking for a healer? <laughs> Thoughts? Switch for Kokomi. Okay, that name is so cute. By the way, I appreciate chat being so nice and chill. I feel like <laughs> sometimes, especially if I'm not gaming super frequently, it's kind of I don't know. Like, if I go play Overwatch, people are like, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? Bro, because I have 10 hours on Overwatch. That's that's literally why. We're just here trying to have a good time. Oh my god! We'll need a strategy. Why is she so beautiful? <laughs> what? Give me this fit. Give it to me. I want to wear it. Hit <laughs> it over. What? Oh my god. Something on your mind again? Yeah. Allow me. Oh my god. <laughs> so yeah. She got mom and a jellyfish. And I still got the jellyfish. Okay, anyways. Um mum 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 mum. She heals beautiful. Mmm, beautiful. Um, beautiful. Do, 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 do. Where is Sumeru? Oh, I have so many places yet to. Oh, I need to get this and this. Desert and forest here. Oh, here. Beautiful. <coughs> she 
she disappears, bro? What the heck is that? Kaden? I think I remember we were kind of here before. PG-13 vibes. This ain't you, Iman. For starters, don't call me Iman. You don't know me like that. You think just because you know my name on wiki? You know me like that? You don't know me like that. <laughs> Second of all, ah yes, of course. I am extremely infamous for being extremely inappropriate. That's me. Very, very controversial. Always just saying the craziest stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my land. <laughs> That's crazy. You haven't sworn in 23.5 minutes. You're being a little too PG. You're not even playing Fortnite. <laughs> I like his little earpiece. That's cute. Just teleport here. You can read NPC minds with her E? I see everything. <gasps> He's happy. Drunk people are so fun. That's so cute. Whoa. Is she like not a real NPC? I don't get it. <laughs> Look at her. <laughs> um. Oh, they have nothing in their minds. Do you guys want to hear the most embarrassing thing? So, I have like cute. Nothing escapes me. I have really chill normie like normie friends like they don't watch streams they know a little bit about gaming but you know like just not in this industry at all and one of them is really really sweet her name is yang <laughs> she was actually in my latest vlog um that i posted yesterday <laughs> and this one time she commented on one of my posts and she said something sweet or whatever and what are you Someone responded and they were like NPC comment I felt so bad. I freaking deleted it and blocked them. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. And she brought it up the next time we hung out and she was laughing her ass off. I was like, I'm so sorry. And she was like, it's just the most random way to insult someone, dude. NPC com. Are you being nice and normal? Freaking. NPC? Nor. Nor. I like the Normie posting. Dude, where am I going? Oh my god. No, she understood it. She plays. Hold on. Thank you! She, um, she plays games sometimes, just not super actively. That's the thing. I think legit, like, 80% of gamers are not on Twitch regularly. The people who are on Twitch regularly are, like, the super hardcore ones. Is it all the way up there? Uh, has anybody played Soul Knight on mobile? She plays that a lot. I actually just recently started playing. Uh, 
Get to it, little lady. Hop. Ooh, I hope I make it. If I do this until my thingy is really low and then I hop, I'll be okay. Mathematically speaking, I should be okay. Statistically speaking, I'll be alright. You can't tell me that was in the most clutch, calculated movement you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> APM out of this world. This is what it is, you know. Dude, what? Did I just climb this for nothing? I'm genuinely so confused. Okay, actually, I just want to get to the top anyways. And then I'll go find the thingy. Yeah, I want to look at the view. <laughs> Who's the villain? It's underground. Oh. Um, I, I'm just, I'm going to tell the full story another time. Damn, that's crazy. Damn, look at me. Look at us. Who would have thought? I love that little, don't even know what it is. That little floating harp looking thing. Looks sick. So, it's underground. How am I going to get there? Wait, can I stand on these leaves? That's so cool. Wow. Very, very cool. Do you guys know how I get underground? She's not partnered with Spotify. I don't know why you're asking her that. But I am partnered with Spotify. Oh, it's a quest? I see. Cute. I'm not gonna lie, the one thing that <laughs> I don't know if I'm like not supposed to say this but I wish the one thing I wish was in this game was being able to like you know like in Harvest Moon or Maple Story you could get married to a character oh, that would be so cute you know <laughs> I want to have my cute little character get cute little engaged and then cute little married yeah i do i do hello hello sometimes i want to wear her like a boa you know why does she Respect look like a goddamn rocket launcher? Bra. Every creature. Bra. Each fish in the ocean swims in its own direction. Facts. Tell them. I Let's agree. Move out. What are you looking at? I <laughs> actually frightened her. That was mean. That was mean of me. Escape. Monka! I see everything. Ah. 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 Trying to see what everybody does. This way through. Ah. Ouchie. Make yourself a move. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> 
I'm not gonna lie, sometimes when the big bosses are down, I kind of feel bad, you know? I'm like, oh my god, you're hurt! But I'm supposed to, like, take advantage, but they look so beautiful! And they're like, oh, I'm down! You know what I mean? Maybe that's just me. Yeah! And then... Yeah. I'm allowing. I'll allow it. Illusion shattered. So pretty. So pretty. So beautiful. Grazie. I know what else I was gonna talk about. Have you, has anybody? Oh, I have her all, so I wanna fight something else. Has anybody played, or not played, has anybody been watching Love Island? Pause champ? I know, likely niche within the Twitch community, but, ugh. Oh. Not a single one? Hello? Someone in my chat has got to be watching the latest season of Love Island. No yeah. Hold the line. Okay, I think one person said yes. Is it good? Yeah, it's fucking fire. Yeah, I made Arya watch it too. <laughs> I want to see what our alt looks like. Ooh. Ooh. The way the abilities combo is so gorgeous. Guys, I don't think you understand how much money I would pay to watch Love Island on my stream. Oh my god. It's at least five figures, maybe six. For real. Love I I'm just gonna tell you guys about it, because if you're not watching it, you're probably not gonna watch it, so let's just talk some shit, even though you don't know anything. It's a show where... Oh, I have the best stories, okay? Listen up. It's a show where they bring together like 10 or so contestants, like 10 girls, 10 guys. And I kid you not, it's Discord dating. They make them sit in rooms where they can't see each other, but they can hear each other. And then they make them talk to everybody. And then they have to choose someone to marry within a week of talking. It's legit sleeping on mic, calling each other Discord kitten and shit. It's, it, that is the show. <laughs> Basically. But for like super grown adults. I'm talking 25 to 35. Wait, did I say Love Island? I meant Love is Blind, I'm so sorry. I meant Love is Blind. Have you guys been watching Love is Blind? <laughs> I watch both, so. <laughs> Have you guys been watching Love is Blind? Cause I, I am gonna start spoiling the latest season. I know that show, I watch that show. Okay, some, some people, okay, good. I am caught up on the latest episodes so that's the premise. They bring them together. Spice, all right? They bring them together and they're like, talk amongst yourselves and figure out who you want to marry. That, like straight up. Pick someone to marry within the week. And I'm not gonna lie, it's a little bit hilariously cringe. What is this? to watch someone in one room get down on one knee and propose over the phone to someone else. Grow, grow, grow. Yeah. They get down on one knee and they can't even see the other person. Will you please? I would love to for the rest of my life. One week into knowing them, huh? Couldn't be me. 
I will know a man for two years and I will still not truly know him. <laughs> hmm, so what? Seven days? You couldn't pay me enough. No. Wait, why am I dying? Why am I dying? Allow me. Spooky. Spooky. Anyways. <laughs> Sounds like trust issues. No, it's just experience. Church. So, they do all that. I don't really know what to do here. Let me figure out... Okay, I'll go fight this little cutie patootie. I'll heal first, though. They do that, and then, you know, they propose, and if the person says yes... Then they live together for a week or two, and then they get married. And they either say I do, or they say I don't, or whatever, but you get to see their journey. <laughs> Love at first Discord call, for real. In the latest season, there is this one guy. Ooh. One guy. Shine down! He's... He's a sociopath. Straight up. And I do not say that lightly. So let me tell you why I say that. Okay? Oh my god! I need a character that's gonna, you know... You know, I don't want to do this thing. Actually, I could with the other guy. Press T on the light? <sighs> Press T. Okay, should I do it again? That's what they were trying to explain in the thing! Oh, it's not that. Wait, but where am I supposed to go? Oh, here. I wonder who this oh. gift could be from. Oh, that's so cool. I get it now. Oh, I get it now. Oh, wait. So this one guy... There's certain things that he said that I can't talk about because they're extremely not PG-13. But he basically gets on the show and he starts talking about his adult experiences. His extreme... His intense adult experiences. It's very odd. And the girl he's talking to is like... Didn't ask, but okay. And then, when he proposes to her, she says no. She's like, mm, no I feel way. like, you know, you kind of put on a front, but it's not really who you are. And I'm like, very, very true. Absolutely true. And then they show him doing his, like, post-show interview, because he has to go home, because the girl said no, you know? And you know what he does? He asks the interviewer, he's like, are you rolling? And the interviewer's like, yeah, we're filming. And he goes, oh, all right, one sec. He takes out... No, I need to pause for this. He takes out eye drops, puts them in his eyes. And he's like, is it okay if I do this? And they're like, if your eyes hurt, yeah, you could use eye drops. He takes the eye drops again. And he goes... The eye drops are pouring down his face again. Well, you know, I just... I couldn't imagine that within a week, I could fall so in love with someone that it would bring me to tears. He tried to fake cry on the show, and they left it in. Which... Wow. I was... No yes. I was like, producers, you guys did good. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. It was absolutely hilarious. 
And I cannot wait for the reunion. I hope they call him out. I want to see what the heck he's going to say because it was so clear when he went on the show that he was just trying to get internet famous. He kept talking about all this random shit like, yeah, you know, I made a lot of money. Hold on. The founder of Playboy. Do you think the way he treated women and his lifestyle in general were bad? Yeah. Anyways, so <laughs> when he went on the show, he just kept talking about all this random stuff like, yeah, I made a lot of money, but then I realized like that's not really what I wanted. So I traveled to like Africa or something where I did wildlife photography, and it's so crazy being out in the wilderness for days and weeks and like <laughs> he said waking up and sleeping among dead carcasses of animals that were like literally who the fuck asked bro he just came on that show to flex and then fake cry okay the inappropriate stuff that he was talking about i you know i don't want to say it verbatim But do you guys remember that tweet? Um, you remember that tweet? I accident like, I tweeted something and people took it the wrong way on my second Twitter. D do you remember? Do you remember? It was about the hair stuff. You know that the edges on your hair. <laughs> that is basically. Oh no! I wasted the ult. That is what he was sitting there talking about to this poor young woman who, quite frankly, just did not ask. She just did not ask. They're sitting there like, hey, like, what are you looking for in a partner? Blah, 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 blah. And he goes, well, actually, for me, I'm looking for a partner who can bring me to the edge of the world. <laughs> you know? Anyways. So that was his whole personality. He was like, I was with an older woman and she really, really, whatever. And it's like, this did not naturally come about. You went out of your way to discuss these things. And that's weird. That tells me, because it, like it was not a natural, um, path for the conversation who was like wow you went out of your way to discuss this on national television because you want people to know you for that and then you fake cried no nah, i'm not i'm not over it i'm not over it and it was hilarious fake cried wow have you considered voice acting i would love to do it um, I would love to do one-offs. <laughs> Opinions on Cole and Zeneb. Don't get me started. Oh, love is blind is insane because you are watching people get like emotionally abused and then just get over it and then get married. Like the... The situations in this show, the the guys will literally be like, <laughs> the girls will be like, so what do you think of me? And they'll be like, oh my God, like, I think you're a nine out of 10. And the girl will be like, well, did you think any of the other girls you talked to, like now that everybody has seen each other in person? I'll be like, oh, well, yeah, this girl and this girl, they're a 10 out of 10. And the girl will be like, well, you're, you're marrying me, but you like them better? Or like you're more attracted to them? Huh? And then the guys will be like, well, yeah, you know, like, that's just attraction and like, you know, eh, meh, 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 meh. Oh. it drives me crazy because it makes me realize people's standards in relationships are on the fucking floor. They are in the dirt. They are underground. Just like that one portal I had to get. It's underground. The bar has not been lifted whatsoever and it's kind of it's yucky to think like and i'm sure there are some guys even at home that are like oh yeah you know like some girls can be more attractive than my wife the point of marrying someone 
is that they as a human being should be subjectively the most attractive to you. Like if I'm gonna, my husband to me will be the most attractive man in the world to me. That like, that's the point. They should be a 10 out of 10 to you. When someone asks you, you should say they are a 10 out of 10. Not, oh, they're a nine out of 10. And that girl, well, she's a 10 out of 10. That's my opinion. And if you guys disagree, let me know. Like, they, you don't have to say objectively, my partner looks better than everybody in the world and models and whatever. Oh, the guys on the show will literally bring up like Kim Kardashian and shit. You would not make it past the first date with me for real. Also, if you disagree, tell me why. Tell me why. I agree, but it's kind of unrealistic. I feel like that's how love should work. What do you mean? What, you, what the hell you mean? Okay, and you know what? Before we continue this, do you guys understand the difference between subjective and objective? <laughs> I think we should talk about that first. All right. Subjective means to me. Objective means you are better looking than everybody objectively. Like, you know, we can all look at a model and be like, yes, they are attractive. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but subjective means to, to me. So, it's unrealistic. Nah, no, you're worth it. Don't worry. Yeah, I'm curious why you guys think that's unrealistic. Why is it unrealistic? Because, mm, I feel like that's not a standard, like, just for your partner, but it's a standard for, like, your, the type of love you're looking for. And that's the kind of love I'm looking for. When the sun's out, bathe in sunlight. Serious input here to help other men. Let's say a man only wants to be monogamous, but is sought after by multiple equally attractive women. What does he do then? How does he choose, especially in the spur of a moment, if they are all in proximal location, par example. Have you guys heard of personalities? <laughs> Why is this only based off of, I have four women around me, they are all objectively an eight out of 10, and they are all within three to five miles from my home, which one should I choose? This ain't local singles ad. Like, talk to a human being. Do you get along? What's going on? Dude, some people are 4 out of 10 and they know they can't have 10 out of 10 and they will find a 5 out You are speaking client, ob objectively. Client, You're saying like, this person in the world is about a 4 out of 10 in attractiveness. What I'm saying... Also, I I'm so sorry, but like if you've never really experienced love, maybe it's harder to relate or understand. Huh? But when you love someone, you're like, they are a 10 out of 10 human being. Like they are a 10 out of 10 out of attraction in terms of the combination of looks and personalities and behaviors and characteristics to me. Does that make sense? I would love a microwave Pop-Tart. <laughs> At least for me, I, I don't want to be in a relationship. <laughs> Sorry. I don't want to be in a relationship with someone who's like, yeah, like you look great, sweetie, but th I find this person more attractive more because to me attraction is a combination of character and how you look like of course objectively speaking many people like just based off of looks look way better than me but you shouldn't be more attracted to someone than your partner that's in my opinion where the issue lies you know when the sun's out bathe in sunlight but when the moon's out bathe in moonlight <laughs> Sorry, but why is it good to take relationship advice from a gameplay streamer? Not being horrible. I'm just interested why this is being talked about. No, okay, we're just talking about stuff. Also, I I would like for you to know... I cannot say this seriously with her saying this in the back. 
I am more multifaceted than being but a gameplay streamer. <laughs> I would just like you to know that. When I get off of my stream, I don't cease to exist as a human being. I actually continue to live my life. And I, I actually did live my life prior to becoming a streamer. So, I'm not just pixels on your screen, albeit being pixels on your screen. <laughs> I swear, it's, it's like, oh my god, it's like, you know when you see a teacher at the grocery store and you're like, holy shit, you exist outside of school hours? <laughs> It's that kind of thing. Which, like, I, I, I understand, but... Yeah, no. <laughs> Wait, you're real? You're real funny looking. Sorry. Anyways. What are your guys' thoughts about this? Especially as I'm explaining... Oh my god. And the issue with another couple... <sighs> this guy named Barstool... <sighs> I'm kidding, his name is Bartiste, but on TikTok, everybody fucks up his name just because he's being such an asshat in the show. So they call him like Barstool Barista. <laughs> Sorry. The barista one is really good. <laughs> barista this week has just said and done and this and that. So funny. Let me show you guys, okay? Bartiste. I think his girlfriends or like a fiance whatever her name is uh nancy i believe you know wait i can just show you guys here bar one client two clients three clients this is nancy this is bartiste this is the guy who did the fake tears so funny so funny. Nancy? She's so fine. And the every single episode is just about how hard of a time Barstool is having being attracted to the woman that he proposed to. Literally the whole show, their part. Wait. Yes, this is Zainab. The whole show is him being like, I don't know if I'm not attracted to you. That's the whole show. You watch her cry out of insecurity, which is so sad. What? Bro, she's crying. I'm like, do you got eyeballs? I don't know. It's also, it's just... I understand he's probably trying to be some form of honest with her, but there is no nice way to tell the per your fiance that you're not physically attracted to them. Like, there's just. You can't, bro. There's no nice way to do that. Ooh, what's this? <laughs> To oblivion. Crazy. Yeah, he was like, but looks do matter. She's literally so pretty. <laughs> to be fair, aside, like, taking it out of personally speaking. Sorry, one sec. Do you think spying on someone through their phone camera and interfering in the personal life of one is legal or illegal and whether you think it is moral or immoral? I am very, very, very worried that you would even ask such a thing. That's extremely concerning. And you should stop. Immediately. Hmm. Yeah, illegal, hopefully, and immoral. Whoa! Oh, I mean, if you are the victim, then. Yeah, that's messed up. Oh yeah, I was gonna say. 
you know, zooming out of bar stool and mole, coal, whatever his name is. Zooming out of all of that. It is interesting to think, like, you can feel so emotionally connected to someone and then see them and not want to be with them anymore. Like, we must have really... Bro, how am I gonna better... How am I gonna better attack this thing? And you know what else I find interesting? In these Love is Blind shows... I don't think there's been a single time where the girl... Was the one who was like, oh no, like... You're not attractive enough for me. If anyone wants to correct me, feel free to, but... Just making a... You know what, just, just something I noticed. Was there one person? I think it's like one girl to like six guys. Jessica and Mark, I see. I don't think I recall that one. At least on this season, it's like two guys have that issue and no girls have that issue. Either way, um, more so just like a comment on how how we view dating sometimes. You know, like you can be so into someone's personality, but if mentally you are very used to being attracted to a certain type of person, that can be difficult. And you know what else is interesting? How much mm, attraction is dependent on environment growing up. It's like, you might be missing out on the love of your life just because you're used to thinking that one thing is attractive. In my opinion, if you grow up in a very like multicultural environment and you try to minimize biases regarding like who or what can be attractive, I feel like that opens you up to having a lot more and better relationships and better luck in love and life. Love and life. Actually, wasn't this something? This was something I kind of saw on LSF, unfortunately. The other week, people were talking about like they were talking about that dating show where a guy was like refusing to talk to any of the girls if they like wait over a certain amount. And you know, just everybody being like, preferences this, preferences that. Whenever I see someone with like really strict, strict or shallow preferences when it comes to dating, you know, I'm not here to tell you what to like or what not li or what not to like, but I will say Where did he go? Where did he go? I hear the spooky music, but where did he go? Oh, there he is. <laughs> so I was gonna say, when I see people justifying preferences like that, you know, like, I'm not gonna be here and be like, you should be attractive to whatever. I feel bad for you. Straight up. If you're like, I refuse to date people of this race, I will only date people of this race. That sucks for you, man. That's like half of a dating pool just gone. <laughs> And like really, really good and true love goes so far beyond how you look. Bro, that shit's about to fade. Someday we're all gonna be a prune, like a big, <laughs> we're 
We're all gonna be big prunes. That's kind of what, no offense, old people are like, like you're just a little prune. <laughs> are you gonna care that much then? Yeah, like a prune, you know, like a wrinkly old prune. <laughs> $2. Your argument is valid for the honeymoon period. All marriages start with your approach and yet 60% end up in divorce. Both men and women are attracted to other people before and after marriage. We all are imperfect humans after all. No, 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 listen, listen. I think you're misunderstanding me. For starters, you can't say that all marriages start off with anything. I'm not saying you can't be attracted to other people. I'm saying if you're marrying someone, you shouldn't be more attracted to someone else. I don't think that's a crazy thought. Obviously, objectively, as human beings, you can be like, that person looks good, that person looks good. And even if you're married, you can probably still develop crushes on people, yeah. But you should still be dedicated, obviously, to your marriage and not pursue those things. It's different to say someone is attractive versus saying they're more attractive than you, my girlfriend. That's... To me, that is cringe. <laughs> that is a little bit cringe to me. That is un petit peu cringe. 70% of marriages end in death. <laughs> Bro. I also think it's... When you guys hear like, uh, half, like 50% of marriages end in divorce, what do you guys think? What is the first thing that goes through your mind? And then I'll tell you the first thing that goes through my mind. <laughs> I don't care. Cheating. Sad. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> Huge number. Hmm. <clears throat> Why get married? People get married too fast. <laughs> you want to know what goes through my mind when I hear 50% of people get married and then divorced? I think. This is, gonna, this is gonna sound crazy, I think. So just hear me out. All right. When I hear 50% of marriages end in divorce, I think good. Because I'd rather two people be divorced and go find love and happiness elsewhere than forcibly try to make themselves stay together. People get married for all sorts of reasons. People find love in all sorts of ways. It is what it is. That's like saying every relationship you get into should be the last one you're ever in. Good lord, no. You live and you learn. That's the point of life. Where the hell am I going? Really, like... And also, it makes me think back to the generations before us where our mothers, our grandmothers, or whoever, they didn't have the choice to whether or not they could divorce. They didn't. And that's far scarier than, ah, oh, people get divorced. To me, divorce signifies, like, we both recognize this isn't working. Like, yeah, are there maybe things people should be wary of before, um, before getting married and is there education we can give people and maybe even like relationship training absolutely you can you can fiddle with those variables all you want but at the end of the day i'm never gonna look at a divorce rate and be like huh no no it's good it is an exercise of your freedom in my opinion <laughs> like have you guys ever been like 12, 13, 14, 15? I mean, obviously you have been. But you know when you fall for someone and you're young? 
And then you grow up and you're like, I can't believe I put up with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, no. You know? That's why it makes me think like, what if I had a terrible relationship like that, but we ended up getting married because I had never experienced anything better and I didn't know that better existed. Like, I would want the ability to... I can't believe I just tried to kill that squirrel. I'm a terrible person. I would want the ability to end a bad relationship. That's it. It's that simple. Ooh, but you know what I do find very interesting? I was actually talking to my dad about this when I hung out with my... Oh my god! I didn't tell you guys, but... <laughs> when I saw my parents in New York uh, recently... Um... I asked my parents... Oh, this is so cute. So, I realized, like, wow, my parents have been together for, like, 30 years. They've been married for 30 years. And they seem pretty happy to me. So, I was like, you know what? I should ask them what they feel are, you know, the most important things in a long-lasting marriage or relationship. But... Me, I took engineering, so <laughs> I've run lab reports, tests, theories, hypotheses, ABCs, DEFGs. I've done all of that. So I was like, I need to gather information in a non-biased way. What does that mean? Oh, I asked my dad while my mom was gone. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to ask them when, when they're together, and then maybe one of them will feel like they have to give a certain answer. I want to hear their unbiased thoughts and opinions, you know? <laughs> so, my mom went to the bathroom, and I was like, Papa, like, yeah, wow, you guys have been married for 30 years. And you know what he does? <laughs> he does this. I was like, oh, wow, you guys have been married for 30 years. And he goes, he started clapping out of joy. He was like, yep, we have. I was like, that's the cutest shit I've ever seen. That's the cutest shit I've ever seen. That's why my standards are, they're up there. <laughs> my standards are up there. <laughs> he was that, he was people clapping. <laughs> it's like 30 years. He was like, yep. <laughs> so cute. And then uh, I asked him and I asked my mom when she came back as well. Because, bro, I didn't have to ask my mom alone. I know whatever she's going to say. She'll say it with him around or not around. Uh, my dad said having mutual goals is very helpful. But he also said it in French. So kind of the way that I understood it was like mutual values and goals. Like if you both want to have kids, a family, and you care about like family values per se... I think that tends to show like a mutual goal in a sense. Um, <laughs> he also said, <laughs> he said something kind of funny. He was like, um, <laughs> he said, also, I think it's important to let go of certain things. I find that sometimes Obviously, he's not trying to generalize. When he says women, he's, like, talking about my mom. But he's like, I find sometimes that women get a little caught up in those small things. And that it's okay to, like, give that to them. Essentially compromise in those ways. Because oftentimes, they will be willing to compromise in the big ways. So if you're in a relationship and, like, you can't stand saying sorry or apologizing or, like, leaning in for your partner when they need it, like, those, those small things that don't matter that much, you, you can't have too much pride or ego in a relationship. It just gets in the way. <laughs> yeah, it was very, very giga chat. He knows. So it's like, I think it's very important to, you know, let go on those things. You'll get frostbite. Let me think about what my <laughs> What did my mom say? The reason it's hard for me to remember is because she said so much. 
Um, I think obviously she said like, hey, trust and communication is really important. Hmm. You know, maybe I'll call her and ask her again. Hold on. Whoa. <laughs> Someone in chat said I need a man like him. Please do not talk about my father like that. I mean, like, I get what you're saying. It's just weird to read. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. See, what a... Let me call her. <laughs> Allo, ça va? <laughs> Musienne, mais je veux pas trop parler, je stream, mais je voulais juste te demander parce que j'ai un peu oublié. Um, tu te rappelles quand je t'ai demandé à toi et Baba, j'ai dit, like, wow, vous êtes mariés, ça fait 30 minutes. 30 minutes, oh mon dieu, 30 ans. <rire> 30 ans, et je vous ai demandé, like, qu'est-ce que vous pensez sont des raisons que vous êtes restés ensemble dans une bonne relation. Je me rappelle ce que Baba a dit, mais um, je me rappelle pas de tout ce que tu as dit. Euh, c'est seulement moi qui peux t'entendre, mais juste je parlais des, des relations et tout ça. Just say. Mm-hmm. 
C'est difficile de rester ensemble comme ça. Parce que ça fait partie de votre vie. Je sais ce que tu veux dire, j'avais ce problème récemment. Même avec les amis, c'est difficile, tu sais, si, si t'es pas en agreement à propos de Hadouk les choses. Anyways, je dois partir, mais merci beaucoup. <rire> Gros bisous, love you, bye bye. Bro, she's for real trying to prep me for marriage. Anyways, so she said, for starter, she was like, The first three years are kind of like, you know, um, what's that say? The rose tinted glasses. So everything is like totally great. You let go of the small stuff, the issues, whatever, blah, blah, blah. But what really shows whether or not, you know, it'll make a good long term partnership is. If they're there for you in your very, very difficult moments. And I know she says that from experience, but I don't want to share for her. But, you know, when people ask like, oh, if I like gained 50 pounds, are you still going to love me? What if I got sick? What if I have cancer? What if I do this? What if I do that? I think it is very, very telling whether or not someone is there for you in those ter even even when you have a really shitty day and you're just not yourself you're not happy whatever how they react in those moments is extremely extremely telling oh my god <laughs> do you guys remember if you were warm would you love me yeah that's should have funny do you remember um bro. for those that were here like two three years ago where I was receiving like a lot, a lot of harassment online. It was like thing after thing that was just, phew. if you know, you know. And I had to just like disappear from the internet for a little bit. During that time, I remember there was someone that I was confiding in a lot. And you know what they said to me? This was like two weeks of back-to-back, -back just terrible things happening to me. And one day they were like... They were like, this has all been... It's been really hard listening to you talk about this stuff. And I was like... It's like, yeah, it's just been really draining. I was like... How fucking draining do you think it has been actually going through it? Huh? And like, listen, I know, I know, you know, like if your friend is really sad or whatever, at some point, it isn't always fun and lively to listen to, but if you care about them, you do it anyways. You don't complain. Or... You try to distract them or cheer them up or whatever. You don't say like, Im oh my God, imagine someone is sick and you're like, mm, taking care of you has been so tiring and they're on their deathbed like, uh, uh, 
Like, obviously, you're just gonna make them feel bad. Huh? It's that kind of attitude, you know? It's that kind of attitude, bro. Yucky! And then, you're putting them in a situation where it's like, Oh, would you rather I don't talk about... All this insane, terrible shit that's going on? And I also, like, you guys know me. I am a generally, like, very happy, optimistic person. I'm typically only sad when... Like, if something really bad happens to me. Like, it's not even coming from within me. <laughs> yeah, your sadness makes me uncomfy. Could you, like, not... Anyways, that kind of stuff, you cannot be like that with your partner. Um... Hmm. Aside from that, she just said, like, finding someone who's responsible and who has similar goals as you. And... She's like, you kind of have to be with a similar person to you. And what she means by that is like... If you're someone who... Ah! If you're someone who like really cares about politics and what's happening... To oh my god, I'm healing him. Oopsie. A brash maneuver! Excuse me, Miss Ma'am. You are so large and in charge. But yeah, similar values and such. Now you're gonna keep healing, right? If you're someone who like cares about people in poverty and politics and what's going on and blah blah blah, it's just gonna be very, very hard. To happily be with someone who's not. And like who just doesn't give a shit at all. That's kind of rude. Wait, why am I not doing damage to anybody? Okay, how about you? I'll take you down first. But that's the thing. I'm not saying one way is better than the other. I'm just saying it's really, really hard. To be with someone who is inherently that different from you. You know? Like, if you're like, hey, listen to this terrible thing that has occurred in the world, and they're like, I'm gonna be honest, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> like, dude. Okay, one more. Girl, I'm gonna need you to get it moving. Wait, did someone gift a hundred subs? Thank you. These are the two characters I'm kind of least used to, to be honest. Yes, thank you so much. Much appreciated. Also, I'm actually... I'm surprisingly feeling a bit better. So, I will almost certainly play... Overwatch after this. <laughs> oh, and then one of the things she said was like... <laughs> she was like, you need someone who is willing to do the things that you like with you. She was like, nowadays, you, like... Well, she said she loves going to like plays and shows. She was like, if I couldn't be with someone who refused to go to these things with me. And that's the only time I get mad at your dad. if He doesn't want to go with me. I'm like, that's so cute. But yeah. Those things make a lot of sense to me. So yeah. 
Why didn't you go to Worlds with OTV? Uh, only some people went to SF. I didn't really want to go. Actually, not that many people were initially gonna go at all. But I just... When's the last time you guys saw me... <laughs> When's the last time you guys saw me play fucking League of Legends? For real. So, hey, why aren't you watching the Dota finals? I'm sorry, I just... <laughs> you know, maybe if they were in LA. Way to travel. I went to New York already for League, so... One sec. Do you guys mind if I do something real quick? And then I think I got like a smoothie or something, so I want to get that. What they say is true. You have to see the world for yourself to appreciate how beautiful it is. Alright. Let me get a little smoothie. I'll leave you guys with her because she's so cute. <laughs> publishing house has released numerous works that lay out military strategy in a simple and pragmatic way. Those are my favorite. Miami. Also, thank you again for the 100 gifted. That is so random and kind and great timing. I appreciate it a lot. And if you guys got a gifted sub, you can do the little automated response that also says thank you. So yeah. Thank you very much. I'm trying to eat healthy, but I'm also trying to live my life. So it's like a balance. Mm. To survive hardship, you must prepare for hardship. Mmm. Delicious. Mmm. <laughs> Delicious. Great way to live, thank you. What is a purple smoothie? Berries. Like blueberries? Mmm. Mmm. Whoa, that's a fire croissant. Mm. Mm. Okay, sorry. <laughs> Respect must be given to the will of every creature. Facts. Each fish in the ocean swims in its own direction. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Okay, guys, we have 20 more minutes of, like, literally talking about whatever. Because when I'm going to start playing Overwatch, you're not going to be able to get a word out of me. So, tell me what's up. What do you want to hear my thoughts on? Y'all say nothing. Literally shut up. <laughs> what do you think about BTS and listing? <laughs> Why couldn't they have sent that Oliver Wilde guy? Is his last name Wilde? The Oliver... The guy who says that he's Korean when he's white. That guy. You want to be Korean so bad? Unless for BTS. Unless for BTS, Hold then. Huh? 
Ollie London! That's his name. Ollie London. I didn't even remember his name properly. That's oh, I was thinking of Olivia Wilde, right? She's like the director. Tell me what's up. You don't even read my comments. I just read your comment. Mm, got him. That's right. Now you need to feel bad for the rest of the day. I don't make the rules. <laughs> I kind of like not knowing where I'm going. <laughs> what are your intrusive thoughts? Hmm. I just think too much about work. Last night. Sorry. You, I, you know, I just have so many feelings. Last night, the thing that I was telling you guys happened to me that I'm going to make a video about. It basically happened maybe at like 8 or 9 p.m. And then I went, I went into bed and I was texting my friend about it. And when I was texting them about it is when I realized like, oh my God, I should make a video about it. But it's like, bro, it's 11. And my brain could not stop like reciting what I would say in the video. <laughs> It's like, oh my god, I should say this. Oh my god, I should say that. But I'm also trying to be like, shut up, go to bed. That's that's my content brain for real. Please show me your Hi Psycho now. <laughs> yeah. What about you guys? What are your intrusive thoughts? Hmm. What this mm. says. Mm. Oh my god, yeah, let's talk about. Have you guys seen how weird Twitter has become? Show me your prescription. Eight dollar verification? Excuse me? I feel the like if they do the whole eight dollar verification thing. It's gonna turn like into a badge of cringe. Like, if I tweet and I'm verified, they're gonna be like, <laughs> L nerd minus eight dollars ratio plus you paid for this ratio plus, you know, like, oh, no, no, you will not catch me being verified. No. <laughs> so sad. <laughs> Listen, not to get political, but does anyone want to get political? Maybe I shouldn't, but like, why not? Did you guys see Elon Musk's tweet about how AOC is selling like a $58 sweater or something? He tried to shade her by being like, the merchandise you sell is $58. And she was like, yeah, dude, my workers are in, uni <laughs> are in unions, they get healthcare, they get childcare if they need it. It's ethical, it's, it's sustainable, it's everything you could ever want in a sweater. And that's the price of it, because of those things. And I don't even think he said anything back. Oh my God, look at how cute those kids are. Don't you miss when, you know, don't you just miss being a kid and not caring much about anything? And just going home to play video games for fun, not because you had to be good or because you thought you were going to get harassed by anyone. And just being excited to share your hobbies and passions with random people across the world. Not worried about the next paycheck or whether you're doing good enough or falling behind in comparison to others not worried about whether you're utilizing your youth or wasting it just being too young to even consider those things not calculating your taxes or whether you're going to make rent this month or whether you have time or money to go to the doctors activity serves no purpose whatsoever whether it's even worth it to hang out with that friend or if they're going to make you feel bad again you're just a kid, nothing matters. It's two weeks from summer, and summer's so exciting. And then summer passes by so fast, and then you're back to September, and then you go back to school, and then it's another year, and you're so excited to be in the second grade. Because two is 
uma pessoa que é... Anyways, can we go back to the Elon Musk tweet? Because that shit pissed me off. It really did. I actually teared up saying that. I, I did. Because I... I miss being young so much. <laughs> one plus one is two it is. <laughs> hmm. Also? Hmm. One, a, a certain question that I didn't get to answer in my Q&A, but that I got, a, that generated a lot of interest was just people saying like, hey, I'm like, I'm 20 years old. How do I solve this feeling of like feeling like I'm not doing behind feeling, sorry, like I'm not doing behind, feeling like I'm not doing enough and feeling like I'm falling behind in comparison to others. And so many people were like, yes, 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 I feel that. Yes, yes, I do you guys feel that way? Because I find it so sad. I mean, when you're a content creator, it's very easy to compare or feel like you're falling behind or whatever. But I find it so sad that like, Regular 20 year olds just going to school are worried about not doing enough like Bro, you're in school Not anymore kind of accepted my life good as you should king queen Jester <laughs> But Oops, yeah, I meant to click that Hmm Maybe I'll give you guys a very quick spiel and you can let me know if it helps, all right? Very, very quick. To, sorry, to anyone who is young, I mean, honestly, even if you're under 30, you're still like relatively very young. If you are under 20, under 25 even, especially, and you have a feeling that you're not doing enough. You're falling behind in life. You're looking at other things. You're like, oh my God, I should be doing this. Whatever. And you're feeling inadequate. Let me hopefully give you some perspective. I feel like the main issue with this is we live in a day and age where it is so easy for us to see what everybody else is doing all of the time. But in reality... The person that is staying up late, working on their startup, is not the same person that you see posting gym pics every day and fitness progress, is not the same person who is studying for their undergrad, trying to get their degree, is not the same person who is, you know, 10 years into their career. And the problem is we are seeing everybody do such different things that we feel a pressure to do all of these things all at once. When in reality, just take a look at your life and be like, bro, I'm in school. If I pass all my classes, I'm Gucci for this year, for this semester, for this whatever. Like realistically speaking, that's enough. People go to school to just go to school. Or if your workload isn't as much this semester, I'll just do this and get a part-time job and that's reasonable and that's enough for me. You have to <laughs> kind of like, Take a step away from looking at what everyone else is doing and just look at what you're doing and say, is this reasonable? I think that's a really, really good word to utilize a bit more in life. Is it reasonable? I'm, I'm going to school. That's enough. That's fucking enough. All right. The world remains constant over the centuries. But human life like there's only so many hours in a day. We feel pressure to do everything, but it's impossible. The pressure just comes from social media mainly to be honest this surprisingly helped a lot i'm glad and i want you guys to know like if you think i'm a successful person just know like i have those thoughts as well and i've been streaming since i was super young like i've been doing shit and even i am sometimes like am i doing it though but i recognize like i swear it mainly comes from comparison 
you wouldn't even know what enough is if you didn't have something to compare it to, right? So, do what feels good to you and feels reasonable and feels like enough. Honestly, kind of disagree. Please feel free to tell me why. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I think sometimes people think I dislike when people disagree with me, but I don't. It's just annoying when people say, mm, you're wrong, or I disagree, but they never ever say why. Like, bro, just finish your sentence. <laughs> but I'm glad that it helped you guys. And I wanted to finish the thought that I was saying. Where like, I feel this way as well, and I always do that trick where I will get a piece of paper and I'll write down all of the things that I do. I'll be like, okay. I stream this much. I take these many meetings. I hang out with my friends this many times a month. I will jot down my life on like a monthly basis. And I'll be like, looking at this piece of paper, is this reasonable? And if I think it is, I just stop worrying about it. Hmm. <laughs> Writing is so good for the mind, yeah. This music is so cute. <laughs> Fuck therapy, I'm watching this from now on. <laughs> All I want to do, or like, what I find most fulfilling in life is bringing value to others or being able to improve their lives in some way. You know what I've been thinking about a lot recently? I really want to... Hmm. I wish there was something I can do. Some sort of like charity initiative to help the homelessness problem within LA because it's a problem that is like so visible to me. And I feel... Like, I really like the saying, tend to the garden that you can touch. Which means, like, you don't have to worry about every single problem in the world, but if there's something pro proximity-wise to you that you can help with, like, just do that, and that's enough, in my opinion. But it's hard to figure out why. I have yet to, like, fully look into it, but I plan on it. <laughs> it's just crazy, bro, like... Makes me so sad. Sometimes I'll see someone like sleeping on the side of the street and I just wanna be like, bro, bundle up. I got a second bedroom, let's go. It like, I think the reason it makes me sad is because I feel like it's not good for your brain to walk across other human beings that are suffering and be forced to ignore that. I think that says something really, really bad about the society or community within that area. Does that make sense? I think that's... It just feels so wrong. I also think from like a humanity perspective... Yeah, it desensitizes you. I think it's just not... It's not even... It's not good for your brain. And it's obviously very sad for the people. <laughs> Bundle up chat, we had in a pokey's mansion. <laughs> Like, there should be just some cool shit where... Listen, guys. Y yeah, I got some money, but I don't have, like... I don't have money money like celebrities do, you know? I just have, like, damn, I grinded kind of money. Like, I can take care of my parents' money. But if I was really fucking rich rich, I would legit just build a big fucking house. And be like, everybody hop on in. <laughs> and then when it gets full, I'll just build another house. I don't know. Can somebody do that? <laughs> I'm confused. I mean, I'm not confused. It all comes down to just politics and shit, but. Time to go. <sighs> Shh. 
you know. Like, I, I wish it wasn't the case. I watched a documentary that says only drug addicts are on the street. Do you guys think that's true? Someone said that in chat, it wasn't me. The thing is, for me, that also doesn't change that much. Like, even if it was only drug addicts, those are still people that we should take care of and try to find help for. <laughs> Someone in the chat! Someone said... Someone said, I'm a drug addict and I'm not in the street. But you're in here! Woo! Woo! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> They're like, mmm, incorrect. I do a lot of drugs. I'm right here. I'm at home, inside. <laughs> We're on Twitch, actually. Ooh. Feminist on the deep! Using your tax money for- Yes! Yes! I would actually love it so fucking much if they would use my tax money on the people that needed it. Like those that are homeless, or struggling, or drug addicts. I would actually- That might turn me on a little bit. No, it is not something that angers me at all. <laughs> I know you tried to pose it as such, but no, that would not piss me off. What's, it would actually? That sounds like a great evening. Like, I'd be kind of hyped up. Oh my God, did you just, did you just help someone? I'm blushing. Were you, did you just show empathy towards other human beings? Whoa. <laughs> Crazy. Crazy. <laughs> um. Mmm. Mmm. That chocolate. Wanna come over for tea? It's chocolating, you know? Like, damn, that's some chocolate. With the wind. Oh, it's in the middle. Wait, but how? Do I need to freeze my way over? Because I don't want to do that. What is this? This is Genshin Impact. I have a banner for it down below. Guys, click it. Just for fun. It'll make me look good. But also check out the game, because it's really, really fun. <laughs> and pretty and enjoyable. The click the banner. Okay, don't click the banner. How about that? No, guys, don't click it. Seriously, please. Please don't do it. You don't know where it's gonna link. Like, dude, don't do it. <laughs> okay, you know what? I'll leave it up to you. <laughs> Chat is so annoying. Very fun, great people. <laughs> Listen, I know. I don't need to tell you guys anything about Genshin. Like, if you know. You know. For me, it was like the first moment I laid my eyes on this game. I just knew I'm going to love it. I'm going to download. And I am going to collect every single waifu there is. And there's nothing anyone can do about it. And Husbando, of course. And if you don't get it like that, like you... I'm sorry, you just don't... Like you don't get it. I'm gonna spend hundreds of dollars. And I'm actually not gonna regret it. 
<gasps> An assassin from our homeland, or a fool who trespasses upon the waters of Jinka. Oh my God! You're like a big. Coveting the shapes of the living, pure mm. water can mm. take on many forms. Butterfly In this seal. Way, shall water deliver your punishment? Hey, can you come down here? Cause I ain't got. I don't have many. Like, yeah, I don't Shine have. Down. Like, I'm kind of down here. Oh, hey! Oh, wait, I should swap that lady. Uh huh. True. Cats do that too. Wait, why can't I? Oh, there we go. I can't configure my party? How am I gonna beat her if I have no, like, arrows and stuff? Oh, no, 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 no. No swap to water, lady. No swap. <laughs> yeah, I was really trying in the middle of a fight. Oh. Oh! Um Okay. The power of water. Bro, am I just gonna to I need to kill her shape. fast, otherwise Half of this stuff is gonna boom boom. There is no escape. I love it. I think my favorite characters are Electro. I just love the way it looks. And it looks like it does so much damage because it's like zappy, you know? I need her to heal. Alright. When's your next stream? Maybe... Maybe Monday? I don't know. Maybe tomorrow. I don't have plans for tomorrow. Let's see what happens when you lose your foothold. Oh, Jesus Christ, not my foothold. That wasn't my foothold, actually. This is my foothold. Ah! That was my foothold. That was not my foothold. The power of water is its ability to take any shape. Facts? No printer. <laughs> Sorry, I just love hearing the random dialogue. It's like, are you teaching me a lesson? That's kind of cute. Illusion shattered. I'm trying to build up to the... Oh my... Dude, they are really killing it. And by it, I mean me. They are really killing me. I wasn't even looking at the health bar. I was like, I'm gonna be fine. <coughs> so rude, bro. Like, I'm down here. What do you want me to do? Uh, uh, bitch, what the? That is really messed up. Am I healing you? A brash maneuver. A brash maneuver. Sorry. Ow! What am I? Should I just eat them? Ow! Oh! Oh! She's so cool. This is the new character, by the way. As long as rain falls and rivers flow, water will exist forever. Well, I did it. I figured it out. The weather is lovely and warm. <laughs> Things are about to start getting lively again. Coo, 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 coo. Hey! Bum! Okay! <laughs> 
Thank you guys so much for watching, and thank you again, Genshin Impact, for sponsoring my stream. I think they are one of my favorite sponsors ever because, one, it's a game I played like two plus years ago, so I love it even without the sponsor. And two, playing it is so chill and fun and easy. It's just... And also, thank you guys for supporting me to the point that I get to do things like this that perfectly intersect between things I like to do and, and I kind of make some money. Like, that's pretty nice. <laughs> Thank you guys again if you want to check it out. Um, this is the beautiful, cute little new character, Nahida. And yeah, I have a banner down below. Would you guys like to switch over to Overwatch? Bro. <laughs> How do you guys feel about Valorant? For me, facts, bro. For me, Valorant.